This video was published by MBKP International, LLC. In this video we're going to talk about our guillotine EC17 paper cutter. We also have the guillotine EC19 paper cutter. The only difference is the guillotine EC19 is a little bit bigger machine than the CC17. Other than that, they're identical. And by bigger, I mean the cut width. On this guillotine EC17, the cut maximum cut width is about 17 and a half inches. The EC19, the maximum cut width is about 18.8, 18.9 8, inches. The maximum cut height for a stack of paper on this EC17 is um, 1.6 inches. On the EC19, the maximum cut height is about 2.1 inches. So, for example, if you had a um, some, if you bought, purchased a ream of 20-pound paper, 500 sheets as a ream, it would be about two inches, and, it, and the EC19 would be able to cut the entire ream. Why this one, the max is going to be about 400 sheets of 20 pound paper. Okay. First thing you want to do on this um, unit is to, you're going to just, after it's installed on its, after you assemble the stand and put this paper cutter on there, um, the paper cutter itself comes fully assembled. So the only assembly you will have to do is the stand, and that we do have a video for that. But um, once you get it on there, securely on there, you, you just plug this into a standard 110 volt North American wall outlet. Like so, right here you got your breaker or on off switch. Right now it's in the on position, but that'd be off. You just want to make sure it is in the on position before you use it. Right now it hasn't turned on yet, it's because this emergency stop is engaged. And typically when you get these machines, they will be engaged, so you'll have to twist this. And as soon as I twist it, it'll pop out and the machine will turn on. Just like so. Okay, so if your machine don't turn on right at first when you get it, you just want to make sure your breaker um, on-off switch is in the on position, and you want to make sure that emergency stop is not engaged. Okay, this machine does have a lot of nice safety features. One of the nicest is this front shield here. With this shield up, the cutter will not work at all. The blade will not go down. It will only go down when this, machine, this um, shield is, is all the way down. It also has a nice uh, um, plexiglass shield back here where you can't get your hand through here at all. So make sure you, um, you can remove it for maintenance, but while the machine is being used, make sure you, can't, you keep this on. You'd have to remove some screws back here to remove it for maintenance, so just keep this in place when the machine is, is in operation. Another nice safety feature, as I already showed you, is an emergency stop. You just push that in at any time and it'll kill the power. Twist it and it will pop out on its own and the machine will turn back on. And finally, or a nice safety feature is it's a two hand operation. You cannot work it with one hand. So to operate this machine, you can see the blade right there and hopefully you'll be able to see it through the, sh the shield going down. But to operate it, you've got to push the reset button and then push and hold both cut buttons at the same time. And do not release them until the blade goes all the way down and all the way back up. It will stop on its own when it comes all the way to the top and then you release them. Now you can release. Again, push the reset. Release. It does have a reverse in case the blade gets stuck. And the reason why it might get stuck is if you have an old machine with a two-year-old machine, the blade could be dull by then if you try to cut through a stack of paper and it gets stuck halfway through the paper and won't finish the cut. Um, the way this machine works when you're pushing these cut buttons, it has to go through a full cycle to work. So if you keep trying to push it, it's just going to keep trying to go down and if the blade's dull, it won't be able to. So in that case, you have to reverse it. And the way you want to reverse this, again, the shield has to be down. You push the reset button and then push and hold the reset and the left cut button. And it would reverse it. And let me give you an example of that. I need to, I need to lower it first. Let's say you cut this up and you can see the blade right there now. Let's say it got stuck right there. It won't go any further. You keep pushing, it won't go any further. You want to reverse it. The reset's on right now, so I can go ahead and do it, but typically you'd have to push the reset and then push and hold the reset and the left cut button at the same time, and the blade will just come back up and reverse. That's how you, could, you would get it unstuck if it got stuck in some paper. I mean, I've heard of some people trying to cut wood with it, and that's obviously going to get stuck, and that would be something you don't want to do. But if you did, if somebody did it was using this machine, they tried something like that, you can use reverse to get it out of that position. Okay, you got your fast forward button and your fast reverse button here, and you just push them, and um, this thing will move. 
if you push and hold it, it'll just start to go faster. And this this button right here, FR. You keep holding the button and it will just eventually speed up and then let it go and it'll stop. Same thing with the fast forward button, FF. You just push and hold it. Let it go when you when you get it to an area where you want it. Or another way to do it right now, it's at 10.97 inches. You can just dial in whatever you want it. Like if you want 10 inches, 10, 0, 0, enter. And this thing will move to 10 inch mark. As you can see, it's got a pointer here and it's precisely on that 10 inch line there. The bigger line right in front of the number 10 or right behind it, whichever way you're looking at it. If you do a number like 9 inches, you're going to have to dial 0 first. 0, 9, 0, 0. Then hit the OK button there. And we'll move to the 9 inch mark. And that's usually when you put your paper in there, you want to put your paper in there and then like set it to 0, 8, and a quarter would be 2, 5. So 8.25 inches, hit OK. And this will move to the 8.25 inches. And if your paper was in there, it would push the paper forward to that mark. Okay, this also has millimeters, and it may actually come in millimeters when you first turn it on, but to, to change it from millimeters to inches or inches to millimeters, you just push and hold this delete button and for about three seconds, and then release it, and it'll change. Right now, it's at 209.6 millimeters, and you could also see that on the finger pointer there. To put it back to inches, which is what most people want it for, push and hold it for three seconds. And it'll switch back to where it was, 8.25 inches. Okay. You also have a proofread button here. And that's basically to recalibrate the back paper su support back here. To make sure it's right on, on the precise measurement it's supposed to be on. So all you do there is just push the button. And it moves back on its own. It's just going to move back to a sensor it has down below and recalibrate itself. And as long as that sensor is aligned correctly, it will recalibrate itself perfectly. We can show you how to align that sensor in, in, a, in a maintenance video we also have. But typically, th those are going to come pre-adjusted out of the factory, so you, you typically would never have to adjust that sensor. But that's how you recalibrate the machine with the proofread button. And let's we'll go ahead and do a, a sample cut here. We'll move this forward about six inches. It's actually zero, zero, 0600. Zero, zero. And push OK and let's lift this up. And basically what you're doing here is you're going to put the stack in and you just basically want to square it on this side paper support and the back paper support. Okay? And to do that you just tap it up front here. Just make sure it's all that's tapping it up front, make sure it's all against the, the back paper support. Then on the side here. Make sure it gets against the, the side paper support good. But um, this is a very accurate cutter, but it's only as accurate as as you you can you are. There is some manual um, stuff you have to do, and one of them is putting a stack of paper in there. If you don't get it in there correctly, it's not going to be able to cut it correctly. So make sure it's squared in there good before you put your shield down to cut. So again, you have to have that shield down or it will not cut. I'll, get, I'll show you with the shield up. Hit the reset. The second you hit the reset, you'll see a red line go across there, and that's going to give you the, um, the approximation where it's going to cut. So you can cut by that red line if you want it to, but it's not going to be 100% precision. It's going to be within a sixteenth of an inch or, or so, maybe even a little bit better than that, but it's just an approximation where it's going to cut. So if we're going to go by the, the six inches here, you want to go by that. Okay, there. I'll hit reset again, but it is still on. With the shield down, actually I'll show the shield up. I'll show you how it will not cut. I'm holding both cut buttons. It don't work. Try it again. It won't work. So this shield has to be down. Push the reset button. Now press both cut buttons and it should work. Just like so. And I don't know how well you can see it there, but you can get that camera there. You can see how smooth that, that cut is on that on that stack of paper. Try to go to different angles there so you can see it. But it's a very nice smooth edge there. You do want to watch your fingers a little bit because the blade is there but the cut pad is, I mean the clamp right there, 
that's always a little bit lower than the blade because when the, with the way this works when you push the cut buttons this clamp comes down first and then the blade and then the blade goes up and that clamp releases the paper so the blade the clamp is before the blade but you still can nick yourself if you're not careful so just be aware that the blade is up there and be careful with that the other thing I want to show you is the cut height of this stand when it's on its stand the table height it's going to be about 32 and a half inches, just slightly over. And I think that's about it. I hope this video has been helpful.